Hi guys. So in today's video, uh, we're going to be talking about credit cards. So I, I feel like a lot of people uh, in this current climate, they're stepping into the working world at a much younger age. Uh, and I realized that a lot of people don't realize the benefits of having credit cards. So in this video, I'm going to be shedding some light on one, the pros and cons of owning a credit card. Uh, two, uh, the different types of credit cards uh, available. So one, you have cashback credit cards. Two, you have miles credit cards. Three, you have rewards credit cards. And four, you have charge cards, which aren't really that common in Singapore. So before we dive in, I just want to preface that uh, this video is not meant to uh, recommend you exactly, you know, specifically which credit card is the best uh, as of June 2022, but more of to share on a general level why uh, uh, you should own a credit card or what perks you can derive out of owning a credit card. Uh, because I believe that every other month, cashback percentage rates are always changing. Every other month, a different credit card issuer will be offering a different promotion. So to really stay up to date every single month, it's a bit of a hassle. What I would recommend is if you want to find out exactly which credit card uh, you should be applying for or you would want to apply for, uh, you can actually just Google best credit cards June 2022 or whichever month uh, it currently is. Because you can look at uh, websites like or blogs like CB, uh, MoneySense, uh, uh, you know, these are websites that are very, very up to date. So, uh, uh, yeah. Okay, so first of all, owning a credit card essentially allows you to accumulate points over time. So let's say spending a dollar gives you two points and spending a thousand dollars essentially gives you two thousand points. And over time, having accumulated thousands of, and thousands of dollars uh, spent on this credit card, you can use these points to redeem gifts. Uh, it could be AirPods, iPads, it could even be MacBook or you could redeem them for miles and these miles can be used for crisp flyer miles which essentially allow you to upgrade your economy class ticket to a business class ticket free of charge or not technically not free of charge but by using these miles that you will have accumulated uh, over the years and apart from that you know a lot of merchants it doesn't have to be just fnb but even retail merchants would offer discounts for certain credit cards like uh, if you use Citibank, uh, if you use DBS, you will get a 15% off. So these are one of the more common perks you will get out of uh, owning a credit card. So some of you might say that, oh, uh, you know, I don't really spend that much. Uh, I don't think I can accumulate points. But to be honest, even if you spend, what, $300, $400 a month, it will eventually add up. 2% cashback might not be a lot, but if you spend enough over a period of, let's say, 4-5 years, these points will eventually add up to maybe a free MacBook or a free uh, business class upgrade. Right, so it, to me, as long as you're not a spendthrift, uh, you will not spend more than your means, I personally feel that it's it's much better to own a credit card. Because no matter how uh, small the cashback is, no matter how little points they're giving you, points are better than no points. A 1% cashback is still better than a 0% cashback. A 0.1% cashback is also still better than a 0% cashback. Right, so to me, I'm, I'm pro credit card. Right. Secondly, credit card issuers love to give these things called sign-up rewards. So upon applying for a credit card and it gets approved, right, within around about a month to two months, you will get issued your gift. So these gifts can range from uh, products like AirPods all the way to points or even miles. So the third pro uh, of owning a credit card, I would say, is it offers you liquidity. So what I mean by liquidity, let me give you an example, okay? So about two, three months ago, I had a friend who wanted to buy a watch at $43,000, okay? But he didn't have 43000 cash because his money was tied up in investments, okay? So the money would only come in in two to three days' time upon liquidating, okay? But the thing is, his essay actually told him that I can't reserve the piece for you. If you want it, you have to come down today and make the purchase. The thing is, with a credit card, it wouldn't be an issue, which he, he does have a credit card. So he went down to the AD, Paid with his credit card and essentially he, he didn't have to uh, you know pay 43,000 out of his pocket immediately right because what happens is the AD would actually bill the credit card issuer and the company would credit let's say $43,000 onto this particular credit card and at the end of the month or the billing cycle which was in two weeks time his 43,000 would have come in already because it took only two to three days uh, for the money to be credited to his bank account upon liquidation. So yeah, this is what I mean uh, when I say it offers you uh, liquidity, right? So moving on to the cons, uh, if you are someone who's very forgetful or sometimes you know you slip up and you miss a payment on your, your, your credit card billing, you'll be charged a very high interest rate of around 25%. Well, technically the interest rate is 25% per annum. You don't pay the full 25% if you repay it within a couple of days. So how they charge you a late fee or what they call APRs is that they take 25% but they only charge you on a daily basis. So you take 25% a year divided by 365, it works out to around 0.07% per day. 
So let's say you are late by 10 days, you take 0.07% times 10, that is the interest that you will be paying on the outstanding amount that you had not paid back yet. Okay, but many a time you can actually just call into the bank and request for a late fee waiver. Uh, typically, if you have been paying back quite consistently, uh, they will be kind enough to remove that, that late fee. So if you are the very forgetful kind of person, you can always just uh, do, do up a gyro form where it will deduct the outstanding amount from your bank on a monthly basis. Right? If you don't want to, like personally, for me, I don't do a gyro because I want to vet through uh, the entire list of my bill just to make sure that I am not charged any uh, additional expenses like you know there are a lot of uh, scams going around these days so I like to go through my bill before paying so I don't usually uh, uh, sign up for a gyro uh, what I do is I set a reminder two weeks before my payment a week before my payment a day before my payment and on the day itself of my payment this way I just set a recurring reminder this way I will never forget to pay Okay, so moving on to the different types of credit cards, uh, SingSaber has actually done up a, a very well summarized creative here. But for those of you who are lazy to read and uh, for some reason love my P3 prepubescent voice, uh, let me sum it up for you. Okay, so first of all, for a cashback credit card, what it essentially gives you is a percentage cashback on every dollar that you spend. So take for example, if you spend $1,000 that month, your cashback would roughly be between 10 to $20. Right? So it might not amount to much, uh, but it's better than not getting anything at all. And uh, some credit cards do uh, allow you to get you know six percent cashback on say Netflix subscriptions or you know twenty one percent discount on patrol at a certain say SBC. So personally, for me, my main credit card is uh, from OCBC. Uh, but if uh, I'm going to buy my patrol, I go to SBC and I actually use my Amex card because it allows me to get twenty two percent or I believe it's like twenty one or twenty two percent discount, right? And then certain credit cards give you five percent cashback on dining at, at a cap of like two thousand dollars. For example, right. So if you learn how to properly utilize uh, your credit cards, you can actually potentially get back more than just two percent cashback. So second of all, you have miles credit cards. So it's quite self-explanatory. Every dollar that you spend, you get a certain number of miles that could be used to redeem flight tickets or even upgrade your economy class to business class ticket, first class, or even suites. So the typical miles per dollar are between one point three to one point six, meaning to say that, for example, every dollar you spend, you get one point six miles. And accumulated over time, these could be used to redeem flight tickets if you have uh, saved up, you know, accumulated maybe 100 over 1,000 miles. So I've spoken to a lot of friends and some of them share with me their thoughts on uh, even though they, you know, they love to travel but they don't feel like getting a miles card is worth it because of how much you actually have to spend in order to redeem flight tickets. So the common consensus is that if you are not a big spender, maybe you spend five, six hundred dollars a month, thousand dollars a month, um, they would tend to get a cashback card. You know something more instant gratification whereas if you're slightly more of a bigger spender maybe you spend two three thousand dollars and above each month so maybe it's more worth it to get a miles card because you can actually accumulate enough miles within a shorter period of time so third of all you have rewards credit cards so rewards credit cards allow you to accumulate points and these points could at a later date be used to redeem gifts or flight tickets so it's for those who are torn in between, you know, you don't want something that's only uh, available to be used for miles. You also want the flexibility to be able to use these points to redeem gifts, uh, you know, to get some cash back here and there. Then uh, that's what a rewards card is for. So now that we have covered uh, the three most popular kinds of credit cards, cashback, miles and rewards, we're going to talk about a segment that is not so commonly covered in, uh, in a local context, uh, which are charge cards. So they're not that common in Singapore because first of all, there are not many charge cards uh, in Singapore to begin with. So I believe that this segment is going to be a bit more lengthy. So if you guys want to skip to the ending, please feel free to do so. Uh, there are timestamps in the description. Right, so let's, let's just dive right in. Um, so, so what is a charge card? Charge cards work very, very similarly to credit cards. But the main difference would be the fact that charge cards do not have a preset spending limit. So if you actually own a charge card, Theoretically, you could buy a condo full cash, which is why you, you should probably have heard of people saying, you know, if you have the black Amex card, you can just buy a, a car, you can just buy a condo uh, with one swipe of the card. Theoretically, you can. And the reason why I say oh, it's only in theory is because while there might not be a preset spending limit before the transaction goes through, the bank or the credit card issuer would actually do some background checks to see if you can actually afford you know, buying this particular uh, item. So, for example, if my monthly, in, uh, if my annual income is only five hundred thousand dollars, and I want to buy uh, a condo in Orchard that costs twenty seven million dollars, the credit card issuer is going to do some checks 
right? They will put that transaction on hold first and they will do some checks to see if you can actually afford uh, to pay for this $27 million condo. So at this point, you potentially might need to submit some documents um, called the POA, which is proof of assets. If you can prove that you are able to afford this $27 million by showing you know, the amount of assets you have with another bank or showing that you have a certain amount of cash on hand, then they potentially might let the transaction go through. So that's why I say in theory, you have no preset spending limit, you could full cash a condo. But the bank or the credit card issuer is going to ask you to prove that you can afford this particular purchase before allowing the transaction to go through. So on the other hand, if you were to use a credit card, they usually give you a credit limit of between two to four times your monthly income, right? But of course, personally for myself, I have multiple credit cards. So for example, my main credit card that I use is the Voyage. OCBC has only given me a credit limit of 43000 a month, but that's because CBS has my uh, records and, and they know that I have multiple credit cards. So they're not going to loan me two to three times of my monthly income just because of the fact that it could cost me to rack up a lot of debt. Next, charge cards don't allow you to make a minimum payment at the end of your billing cycle. So take my credit card for example, uh, my, one of my month's full repayment was only $800. Right, so the minimum that I would have to pay is only $50. So this is a feature that I could utilize if I was strapped for cash and I needed some liquidity on the side. I don't have to make a full payment of my $800 that month. I could actually just pay the minimum and get on with life. So in paying the minimum amount, I would not incur any late fees, nor would I incur any penalty APRs. But of course, if you were to constantly only make the minimum payment, first of all, you'll be in debt. And second of all, it will not reflect very well on your credit score. Because the CBS, which is the Credit Bureau Singapore, actually keeps track of how often you make your loan repayments, how often you miss your repayments, how often you only make the minimum payment, and all of this would affect your credit score, which would affect your credit standing. And this would impact uh, your eligibility of uh, taking up loans in the future. Right? So for charge cards, you actually cannot make just the minimum payment, you have to pay in full. Okay, third of all, charge cards also have a significantly higher annual fee than your typical credit card. Okay, so for those of you who are new to this, your average entry-level credit card requires you to have an, an annual income of 30000 right? And these credit cards, uh, the annual fees are around $200 a year, right? But for the most part, people would tend to just call the bank to request for a fee waiver. And more often than not, they would just waive that fee off if you were to spend on this credit card. So the next tier would be your 120k segment. So if you have an annual income of 120k and above, you can apply for these credit cards. And on average, these credit cards would have an annual fee of between four to six hundred dollars a year. And typically, they do not allow uh, any fee waivers unless you spend around sixty thousand dollars a year. And now moving on to the charge card, the most popular charge card in Singapore would be the Amex Plaid charge card, which um, this is how it looks like. And the annual fee on this piece of shit, sorry, I meant on this card is actually one point seven thousand dollars. So you can see that it's around three times more expensive uh, than your 120k segment credit cards. Now, of course, there are some credit cards with an even higher annual fee than a charge card, which, for example, would be the UOB Reserve card, which uh, has a whopping annual fee of $3,840. Right, needless to say, charge cards are slightly harder to attain, some be invite only, some uh, having a higher annual income of around $200,000 a year. You also do have to maintain a good credit score of A with the CBS uh, and have uh, no records of late payments or defaults. So if you guys want to check out your credit score, uh, I'll put the link in the description. HSBC is having a free promotion, but HSBC typically tends to take around 7 days to get back to you. So if you are in urgent need of it, you can just buy it from CBS for $6. Alright, so I believe that should give you an overall idea of well, the different types of credit cards that you have in Singapore. And I believe that ultimately there's no best credit card uh, for each individual uh, because it's, it's more subjective. It's more of which type of credit card you feel that you can derive the most benefit out of. So for that fact, I'm not going to be doing very specific, explicit recommendations of which particular credit card to get. But I believe if one, you don't spend a lot, maybe around $1,000 a month, you know, you, you prefer instant cashback than something that allows you to accumulate points, um, maybe you don't travel that much, then I would say go for the cashback card. Let me give you an example. Okay, if you're spending around a thousand a month, it's going to take you an average of eight and a half years to accumulate enough points to redeem a business class ticket. Let's use Singapore to London as, a, as an example. Okay, and sorry, not even redeem, uh, 
is not redeemed in full, you still have to pay for your base fare of an economy class ticket. And then you use this amount of points to redeem this upgrade to business class. Right? So it's not even redeeming it in full, it's just upgrading from economy to business class. And I'm using the saver's fare of 164,000. Okay, the advantage fare is actually 220,000 points. Okay, so the difference between savers and advantage is that for savers, you essentially are traveling during your non-peak periods. And for advantage, you're traveling during the peak periods like your June holidays or December holidays. Right, so of course, if you're traveling to, uh, uh, let's say, Bali or Thailand, then uh, it, it's not going to be 164,000, it's going to be much lesser. Right? And secondly, uh, if you spend slightly more, maybe 2,000 and above a month, uh, and you know you love to travel or for your honeymoon you want to travel somewhere nice i believe it's better to get the miles card because yeah i mean to, spending two thousand a month might not be a lot at the start or you might think that it's still gonna take you three four years but to be fair your expenses will increase over time i, I believe if you you're fresh out of the uh, uni you get your first credit card you work for around four or five years at that point in time it would be the same period as you getting married and wanting to go on a honeymoon so I believe that it actually kind of works out, you know, you could use this uh, upgrade to business class for your honeymoon, right? So I'll leave the link to the Chris Flyer Miles calculator down in the description below uh, if you guys just want to, you know, play around with it. Uh, and third of all, I believe that, if, you know, if you're running your own business, uh, I would say you can still consider getting a charge card or, you know, some uh, one of those credit cards in the 120k segment, um, even though the annual fees are high. Uh, but I believe the pros outweigh the cons. Take the uh, Amex Flat Charge card for example, you have a uh, 24-7 concierge, you have no blackout dates, you also have access to private bars, private clubs, private gyms, right, and a whole lot of other perks uh, that I will cover in probably another video. I probably will do a standalone video for the Amex Flat card, right. So, so that about sums it up for today's video. I uh, hope I've been able to shed some light on the topic uh, as well as, uh, you know, educate you guys and, and um, simplify uh, some of the terminologies that might be a bit confusing to you. Do let me know if you guys have any other questions uh, down in the comment section below. Alright, so until the next video, take care.